Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia's Tourism Minister joins international discussion on the impact of COVID-19 on the global travel sector. Specific development pathways are identified for the manufacturing and agriculture sectors. And the Ministry of Health data usage in the fight against COVID-19. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, has been engaging partners in the tourism marketplace as the world assesses the state of the travel tourism industry amid the COVID-19 pandemic. On Monday, 11th May 2020, the Tourism Minister interfaced with the Canadian market, which is St. Lucia's third largest source market. Honorable Fede appeared on Travel Pulse Canada with host John Kirk. There, the minister spoke on several matters, including how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected St. Lucia and steps taken in the fight against the virus. Noting that the region is taking a joint approach to the reopening of the tourism sector, Honorable Fede explained the strategy. What we've been doing is um, working with our hotel sector to see yeah. what those new set of protocols are going to be like, what those new set of arrangements that will govern the operation of tourism. So the tourism standard operating procedure has changed for good in the Caribbean. And what we have done is to seek a regional approach. So we've had the ministers of the OECS meet uh, last week. Uh, we've had the CARICOM heads of government meet as well. Um, and Prime Minister Shastny here in St. Lucia was appointed to chair the reopening of the Caribbean on behalf of the heads of government, uh, I being the current chairman of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, uh, also uh, puts me in that position to, yeah. to reorganize uh, the entire sector. So we've been working hand in hand to see how uh, we can put the Caribbean in a good position. Now, islands are at varying uh, levels of readiness. I think that we are ready in Solutia. Uh, you're going to see us uh, making a, a big announcement on Friday as it relates to how we go forward. The tourism minister noted that COVID-19 has changed the face of travel forever. Consequently, stakeholders within the industry have been implementing measures to mitigate the spread of the virus. You see, in the same way that 9-11 has um, changed our lives uh, as travelers, the very same way uh, COVID is going to change our lives and change travel for good. Uh, we see now that the airlines are, are some of them, not having people sit in the center seats, for example. Um, flight attendants and customers are being required on certain flights to wear masks for the entire duration of the flight. Uh, we see that airports are now testing people for fevers. We see that um, there are no buffets served in certain hotels. We see at the resort level, um, there's increased level of sanitation. We mm -hmm. see that the ground transportation have now adopted new protocols as it relates to seating arrangements and sanitizing protocols. Uh, we see at the hotel as well, um, employees are going to be required to wear uh, protective gear such as the masks to protect themselves and to also protect the guests. Um, I think that hotels are now going to encourage guests in a nice friendly way, um, giving them the option to wear these protective gears as well. Uh, we see that Emirates Airline becoming the first airline in the world in doing the rapid test uh, as a check-in requirement so that yeah. that individual uh, will uh, at least be filtered. Uh, we're being told that the rapid test is not necessarily the gold standard test. There are some uh, abnormalities or some unreliability factors there. Mm -hmm. But um, at least it allows you to filter and it tells you one extra uh, thing about the customers. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede. Meantime, the government of St. Lucia is continuing with the implementation of the medium-term development strategy with the aim of bolstering the economic sectors of manufacturing and agriculture. Anisia Antoine explains. The COVID-19 pandemic has paralyzed the tourism industry, causing serious implications for the economies largely dependent on tourism. The government of St. Lucia has acted quickly with a medium-term development strategy including plans to stimulate the agriculture and infrastructure sectors. 
Tommy Descart, chief economist at the Department of Economic Development, noted that the government is also exploring ways to use its expenditure to boost the manufacturing sector. I think that government can leverage um, its expenditure and procurement uh, policies as a, a lever to, to, to strengthen the manufacturing sector, for instance. We have um, case in points, they say maybe beds, medical beds. Mm -hmm. um, you would need mattresses and so on. So per perhaps you would want to buy that from Lubeco, which, which is a, a local, a local um, producer of this, this kind. Mm -hmm. uh, the government produce, um, purchases um, furniture, uh, uh, office equipment and so on. Uh, if you have a manufacturing sector that, that, that produces this, the government could leverage some of these, um, its expenditure to somehow to help uh, the, 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 the manufacturing sector. And there are a number of other ways that, that, that could happen, but, but having a dedicated policy. And, and I was told that uh, on one of the panelists uh, mm -hmm. last night that there is a cabinet conclusion that states, that mandates that before we procure anything outside of the country, that we ought to see whether it, it, it's, it's, provide, it's available mm -hmm. you know, internally within the economy mm -hmm. and pro to, uh, procure that. Descartes stated that the manufacturing sector can be labor intensive and plays a tremendous role in ensuring the country has food security. We see thriving manufacturing sectors globally. Um, and if you realize um, a lot of them have access to liquidity, so they are export import banks, that the China, um, Taiwan, Australia, even the US, that provides that sort of liquidity to the, to the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. to help them um, export their, um, their, their products into the export market. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a lot of issues around uh, competitiveness, how competitive the, the, the price and the quality of the, manufacture, the manufactured goods here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's an ongoing discussion. Mm -hmm. But I, I certainly think that COVID has sort of, you know, given uh, both the government and the, the, the private sector a sort of um, a nudge that we need to act. And these sectors are agriculture and, and, and the manufacturing sector. The change in the dynamic of business operations due to COVID-19 has allowed businesses to place a greater emphasis on the digital economy. The chief economist explained that the government fostered initiatives prior to COVID-19 to encourage the digitizing of operations. We were looking at purely from a productivity standpoint. How can we use ITC to become more productive as a country? But we see now the issue of COVID, it helps significantly and you need to fast track that. Um, uh, the uh, upskilling our, our our private sector. You know, a lot of our private sector don't have some basic um, um, ICT skills and mm -hmm. so on and that kind of thing. Um, and even an emphasis on financial transactions. You know, the banking sector, you know, we, I know the banks have been trying to do this online banking, mm -hmm. with mobile mm -hmm. banking. Um, and, and there's somewhat, you still see a significant amount of persons still going into the banks, yes. you know, mm -hmm. on long lines. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I think now COVID is going to force a cultural change. Mm -hmm. um, persons who are that sort of technophobe and trying to stay away from, from technology will, will be forced to, to embrace the technology. Yeah. Um, but also the, 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 the private sector now needs to, um, f they, 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 they have to survive. And if they, if they do not transition using technology, we may see a significant amount of our private sector going on this. The chief economist reaffirmed the government's commitment to building productive capacity and expanding growth opportunities in the economy. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Health continues to monitor the COVID-19 situation closely and ensures that epidemiological information is provided in order to guide their responses to the virus. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. As part of monitoring COVID-19 in St. Lucia, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is utilizing its surveillance system to produce data to forecast the disease's impact on the country. National epidemiologist Dr. Michel Fassois emphasized the need to draw data from influenza and respiratory disease surveillance in St. Lucia. Within the epidemiology unit, one of the things that we monitor on a weekly basis is um, influenza-like illness. So um, cases of fever and cough, we monitor on a weekly basis. We have noted that these numbers have been coming down nicely and we continue to monitor them. Um, we also monitor on a weekly basis um, the number of cases of severe acute respiratory illnesses 
So these are cases of fever and cough which need admission to the hospitals. So these, we have our baselines and these are monitored and um, we have not picked up increases in these numbers to date. We know that 15% of these individuals may require admission and another 5% may require ICU admission. So we are cognizant of that and we continue to monitor it now more than ever. Dr. Fasua also spoke on the efforts of the Ministry of Health to monitor deaths in St. Lucia to determine whether or not they are linked to COVID-19. We also monitor our deaths. So um, hospital deaths and um, suspicious deaths, what we do is these individuals are tested for COVID-19 and um, in order for us to be sure and be confident that we do not have any COVID-related deaths. The national epidemiologist also reiterated to date St. Lucia has recorded no deaths related to COVID-19. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fena Leptun. On Monday, May 11, 2020, results for 55 samples were received and they were all negative. This brings a total of 675 COVID-19 tests conducted to date. On Tuesday, May 12, the Department of Health and Wellness received 20 St. Lucians who are cruise ship workers with the Carnival Corporation. These nationals will be quarantined for a period of 14 days as per the country's established protocol. Over the next few weeks, the Ministry of Health will receive more St. Lucian cruise ship workers as well as other returning nationals. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Stock up on essentials, such as animal feed, fertilizers, pesticides enough to last for about 30 days. Stock up on fuel and oils for farm equipment. Ensure that tools and vehicles are serviced to prevent breakdowns and to ensure that farming and food production remain steady. And protect yourself and your workers by ensuring you take all necessary precautions to remain healthy. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow St. Lucia's access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Quayol. Monsieur Tar General, Monsieur Madame, Département, qui est responsable pour les formations à uh, gouvernement cette fois-ci, GIS, en ce moment, télévision nationale pays à NTN, Capacito Nouvelle à Quayol. Capacito, Primus Hutchinson. La panne est pièce la vérité que le gouvernement a placé l'industrie touristique en haut, l'industrie agricole à cette ici. Ce ministre des Affaires agricoles, la pêche, ressources naturelles et coopératives, honorable Ezekiel Joseph, qui fait déclaration à cela, devant une discussion lundi à son entier face à la public. Honorable Joseph a que c'était toujours attention au gouvernement pour que des industries à au point à d'ailleurs gymnage parce qu'il y a un cas complémenté l'autre. A contre, selon le ministre agricole, c'est le seul cas de pas à ce pays, c'est pays à Ouijoua, et pays international pour vendre des produits agricoles. Il y a ajouté que la l'homme mangé, et c'est le seul cas de produit, c'est trop pour le pays à Yon. Il y a marqué que la maladie corona fait public là, ouais, c'est quantité importante, l'industrie touristique là, pour le pays, 
pour service manger et aussi l'autre façon économie. So, moi ça dit that comme ministry nous toujours savent that il est porté pour bailler ici pour et puis nous bailler ici pour et puis pour ça avant Covid, c'est ça Covid avant Covid nous avons commencé un programme. Nous avons commencé un programme um, qui avait qui ça nous a produit cette ici. Quand 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 nous sommes qu'il y a l'anglais on a continuous basis, right? Et puis pour ça nous commence et puis c'est cette doué ça nous nous a identifié because nous croyons that et puis into the introduction of technology by pour faire by différent because là nous fait un analysis là um, primus ça nous veut that là nous qu'a importé plus c'est c'est doué ça c'est là là si nous n'est plus tout cette ici Là, nous avons apporté plus de ça, c'est là où ça va créer un rainy season. Mm. Now, mm. Saison la pluie. Yeah. Saison la pluie. Yeah. So, nous avons nous introduit la technologie, nous avons nous avons ici pour les farmers, pour assister eux, pour ça produire ces deux ça. Là, dit maintenant là, et bien, pour y apprimer. Right? So, pour ça, si mon cas dit, Covid qui a exposé l'agriculture. Covid n'a pas exposé l'agriculture en uh, négatif. Oui. Covid qui a dit que le um, tourisme est important. Et puis, plus nous développons le tourisme, c'est plus il y a nous une um, opportunité en agricole pour nous développer. Le gouvernement, j'avais été très concerné pour la situation de la et de la manière dont a affecté le pays, et particulièrement l'industrie agricole. Le ministre agricole a dit que le cabinet a jadis quitté la nécessité pour placer cette ici en bas sous coup de l'eau. Parce que nous jouons en vendredi et puis ces stickers là dit nous n'y pouvons pas déclarer une emergency pour venir pour l'eau. Non, vous parlez de la femme en agriculture, là nous parlons en vendredi, nous disons qui ça a fait pour l'agriculture, mais nous n'y pouvons pas nous reconnaître. Nous n'y pouvons continuer à encourager les femmes pour planter. Et puis le programme, nous avons mis des pouces COVID qui ont mis des supports pour faire des choses. Mais ça a fait gloire importante. Le code, c'est leur vie à la sec. Ce n'est pas fort, c'est le climat de change. Donc, you know? so, définitivement, aujourd'hui, nous avons décidé qui ça a fait une emergency order, qui ça a fait. Mais si vous avez fait des choses, vous avez fait des choses pour laver les machines, vous avez fait des choses pour laver les machines, vous avez fait des choses pour faire des agriculture. Qui ça nous a nous a décidé? Even construction, because nous dit construction c'est pas qui est important. Je me pose COVID pour créer employment, but construction qu'à ces vigles, pour mix concrete pour faire bail comme ça. Sauf si tout ce bail ça nous qui discute ça puis me dire en cabinet, les mots qui disent ça pour vivre là, pour dis pour les nous faire emergency declaration, c'est un monde ça qui ça y est ça fait, qui manie ça ces vigles, qui monte ça ces vigles, et puis qui cote des comme ça. C'est sauf c'est pas. Sauf pour point ça où mettez là où faire là c'est un point qui est bien important et puis c'est un point où pas ça il a bien pris à soi seulement parce que nous pourrons prendre une décision encore cabinet. Ministre de Santé, on a Mary Isaac, j'ai fait un appel pour que les gens bonne précaution les gens qui boivent l'alcool. Comme le gouvernement a vu établir les licences pour les hommes, on a Isaac, qui a fait un pays pour boire l'alcool en modération et pour ne pas quitter la tentation de la bouteille pour sa boire si quantité et mettre en risque pour tomber malade. So, vous avez dépensé l'argent. Yo pani pour yo acheter wom avec là ou yo fini boire quand té wom nan yo ka vini malade encore à sous compte gouvernement so moi vle di ces moun lan ease up à sous wom nan wom nan pe tuer ou mais ou pas sa tuer wom nan la ka toujours ni wom nous comprendre so nous pas vle moun ka aller yo ka boire wom tellement là yo fini yo vini malade avec yo ni pour taper ko yo victoria hospital nous bouzwe l'hôpital nous pour moun ki ni 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 real malade Moun ki malade di an serye malade. Pa moun ki ale bwe ou an me pi yo tape kwa yon da aksidan. Yo tape kwa yon ka a, koupe yon an lot epi koutle epi kouto. Moun ki ka ale bat madam yo. An viole ish yo piske yo telman sou yo pasap sa yo ka fe. Nou ni pou dou bout sa kon moun an nan peyi. Nou ni pou sa behave kon nou. Se pa pou mye fwa nou wè wom. Ek se pa kay denye fwa. Wom nan kay toujou la. So iza pa sou wom nan souple. Le gouvernement de l'Angleterre a annoncé qu'il y a eu un nouveau support pour aider ces pays qui ont eu la maladie de Corona. En ce support qui ces pays qui ont recevoir, c'est 3 millions de points pour PAHO, c'est l'organisation de santé pan-américaine, pour ça a eu ces diverses nécessités de santé et ce support de management pour aider le système de santé publique ou 
faire bataille contre Corona. Il aussi qu'il y ait un autre 10 millions pour, pour aider si la famille qui est plus risquable, excessive et qui pour abattre la violence domestique contre mal contre les femmes et les enfants. Le ministre du gouvernement de l'Angleterre qui est responsable pour Kawebla, Baroness Liz Sugg, dit que le gouvernement de l'Angleterre n'a pas un commitment pour supporter les amis à Kawebla, particulièrement de voir une situation sous coup. Baroness Sugg explique que la maladie corona a placé toute la terre en bas de mauvaise direction et l'assistance de l'Angleterre c'est pour supporter Kawebla et le reste de la terre pour sauver la vie, protéger les services qui sont valables et qui réduit à ce risque pour qualité de maladie comme ça. J'ai ajouté qu'à part de tous ces millions de points pour supporter à, ça c'est l'Agence des Nations Unies et l'Organisation de la Santé Mondiale qui en bénéfice de la support direct pour les gens qui ont aidé ces pays de la pour continuer la bataille contre le corona. À part de support pour abattre la maladie de la région, 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 400 millions de points pour le programme de développement pour assister ces pays qui plient en risque. Ça, c'est l'Angleterre qui a aussi supporté l'agence de management des as en Caribla. Ça, c'est Cédima et l'autre agence et l'autre recherche qui a fait pour adresser les maladies de Corona à l'Université West Indies. C'est comme ça, nous avons nouvelle là, messieurs, mesdames. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que vous puissiez considérer comment ça fait la vie. Je vais vous présenter une nouvelle en créole. Après ça, je vais vous présenter Chanel. Merci, Appeal Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.